Welcome back to the Real News Network. We join you now from Beirut, and we're with Usama Hamdan, who is the Director of International Relations. Thanks for joining us again. Thank you. So do you consider a difference between the Israeli elite and the Israeli people, or do you see everyone as Zionists if they're in Israel? Even if I'm saying that all, all of them, they are part of the problem, or they, all of them, they are Zionists, but I think they, they have differences. They are not all the same. Because they are like any community. Uh, uh, and uh, I believe some people in Israel, uh, they don't believe uh, in what is happening. They, they, they are against what is happening. Some of them, uh, they are trying to say, well, the Palestinians have their rights. We understand that. We are watching that. Uh, and we can't say all of them are the same. But the point which you are raising, they have to do what they believe or they have to act according to what they believe, which I mean the Palestinian people's rights. You can't say just, well, I, don't, I dislike what Israel government is doing, and that's it. You have to act uh, in a different way. Now, we are watching what is happening in Israel. They have elected the most righted, right wing uh, in, in Israel. Do you think that some of the tactics used by Hamas has helped create that situation? I don't think that it, it's the major issue. It may have an effect by one or two persons, but the simple idea, uh, inside Israel, the people are going to be more hardliners by the time. Why? Uh, well, this is part of what the hardline Israelis are working to. If you go back 20 years before, you will find that the leftists in Israel were, were the most uh, uh, important parties. Now you are trying to find them by a microscope. Why? Because they lost their argument inside Israel. They said that they will create a stable, stable Israel by uh, the peace process, but they failed in creating a peace process because they understood that uh, their community, most of the communities against that, they hesitated. But if you ask them why, they say because the uh, Hamas and the other groups that attacked Israeli civilians, mm -hmm. not the army, but when there were attacks on pizza parlors and cafes or rockets falling in villages, this cut the legs out of the, uh, okay, any kind what, of opposition. What, what, what about attacking the Palestinian civilians? What about killing the Palestinians? It will do the same. So they have to understand it's a war. They are killing the Palestinians. The Palestinians will retaliate. They will react. But, but the so they can't. They the can't. argument's not a moral, an argument of moral well, rights. Well, it's not a moral. Uh, it's an argument. In, it, the question is. It's a political issue. Well, the question is, is, is that the Israelis and the Americans have been very good at facilitating divisions amongst the Palestinians and the Arabs. And it seems to me the Palestinians and the Arabs have been very good at unifying the Israelis. Well, I, 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 I can't accept that uh, totally. I believe uh, uh, inside Israel, they, they all the time created a monster outside Israel, which is the Palestinians, the Arabs, and the rest. They, they were used to do that all the time. They've said that the Arabs will throw us in the sea, and this was a kind of gaining support by the, 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 the Europeans and the Americans. And, 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 in a certain time. So they created a monster, which is the Palestinians and the Arabs, which is not the true. I believe they can keep going like this. But they have to understand the Palestinians will continue the resistance. They survived by fighting 60 years. Can they survive fighting another 40 or 50 years? I don't think so. I don't think that this will, this will generate a huge sufferness for the Palestinians but it will also give a huge sufferance for the other side. But so they have, they have to start from a certain point, and that's it. They have to recognize the Palestinian rights. They have to say, well, all the sufferance of the Palestinians were, was created by, by the Israelis, and we are ready to accept that, and we are ready to, 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 change, to change our policies, starting from recognizing the Palestinian rights, which is one, two, three. Let's say that there is such a thing as Israeli state terrorism. Let's acknowledge that the Israelis attack civilians. Clearly, the Goldstone report says that they deliberately targeted civilians in Gaza. Let's assume all of that. Okay. Okay? That doesn't mean it's an effective tactic for Hamas to do the same thing back. Well, I think... That's what I'm asking. Well, it's not about the morality. I'm asking... Exactly. 
Well, this is a, th a thing which is supposed to be discussed inside Hamas. If we believed in Hamas, it's uh, a harmful tactic. We, w we may change that. It's in Hamas, we always discuss the things. And when we, we, when we understand or when we believe that such a thing is harming our cause as Palestinians. Do you think it did? Because the, this, well, this kind believe, of this I unity believe, in Israel is extraordinary. Well, I believe um, always also those, those tactics prevented the Israelis from crashing Gaza. They, they make a huge d destruction in Gaza. They destroy buildings, houses, uh, public places. But at the end of the day, they couldn't crash Gaza and the people in Gaza by using such tactics. So inside Hamas, we evaluate all the things all the time. We, we, we are not saying that this tool or this kind of tactic is the only tactic which can, which can be used. Wouldn't it be in Hamas's interest to say we're not going to target ordinary civilians? Well, I have to tell you this story because uh, it it's, it's answers your question. In uh, 2003, we were in Cairo. And there was a discussion about uh, uh, a big question or a big request from the Europeans mainly at that time, maybe the Americans supported that, to stop the maritime operations, uh, which it's called in West suicide bombings. Okay, so, let me just be clear so the audience understood. Mm -hmm. Martyrdom operations mean suicide bombings. So well, they came, the European Union came and said to stop. Well, they asked for that, the West. So we said, well, why you are asking for that? Well, the answer was because those kind of uh, uh, actions are targeting the civilians. We said, okay, we are ready to have a deal not to target the civilians both sides. To avoid targeting the civilians on the Palestinian side and on the Israeli side, and we are ready to, to be committed to that. The Egyptians thought it was a good idea, so they mediated that with the Israelis and they negotiated that with them. For three days they went between both sides talking to them. At the end of the three days, they came with a good uh, and clear, let me say, uh, proposal agreement, which says both sides are ready to avoid targeting the civilians. Sharon rejected that. We are ready to deal with this now. No problem. but. All the time the Israelis are using, targeting the civilians to make pressure on the resistance. This is an old way for the occupiers to do that. If he couldn't catch the resistance people, he will kill their families. This is what the Israelis are doing. Isn't it still in Hamas's interest to tell the people of Israel, we're not going to target you anyway? Because this, this creates this unity in Israel, because they, they can create this well, fear they're going to come well, get you any day. They are not united because of the attacks. Those attacks took place 10 years ago. So why we ignore the last, the 50 years before? In the next segment of the interview, let's talk about, can you imagine a different kind of Middle East? What would it look like uh, if you could have your wish come true? Please join us for the next segment of this interview on The Real News Network.